This is Twit. Is that an iPhone in your hand? Wait a second. Is that an Apple Watch on your wrist? And do I, do I see an iPad sitting there on the table? Oh my goodness. You are the perfect person to be watching iOS today, the show where Rosemary Orchard and I, Micah Sargent, talk all things iOS, tvOS, watchOS, HomePod OS. It's all the OSs that Apple has on offer, and we show you how to make the most of those gadgets. Just head to twit.tv slash iOS to check it out. Okay. Uh, Pwn to Own, Toronto. 2022 just happened and it's always interesting to see what hackers wearing white hats are able to do to today's fully patched and up-to-date systems right because you know that those are the targets is in in every case these things are 100 percent patched and we've seen instances in the past where a, a a group will get all ready to to, re- to demonstrate a, a vulnerability that they've g- very cleverly crafted in something. And like the day before their demo, the publisher patches. And like, not because they told them, right? They, I mean, they will end up telling them all of the things that are done during these pwn to own con- uh, contests end up being communicated to the publisher of the, of the thing that was compromised. Uh, but not beforehand. Anyway, so the point is, this is the this is state of the art, fully patched, as good as we know how to make it. Products that these guys are going after. So, um, in the past, we've taken people through a blow by blow, and it, sometimes I think that it ends up getting a little long. So. The, what I, so I'm going to summarize this a bit. The recently concluded Toronto 2022 hacking contest focused upon hacking routers, smartphones, printers, and other smart devices. So it was sort of an IoT-esque, you know, smartphones, printers, routers, and, and other stuff. Um, it was a four-day contest that ended up getting won by DevCore which is the now well-known Chinese Taiwanese penetration testing group. Okay. So to give everyone some sense for this, I'm just going to quickly scan down and I abbreviated these just the bullet points, which briefly describe the attacks. So, and, and this is just day one. Okay. Day one of the four day contest a stack buffer overflow attack against the Canon image class MF743 CDW printer, a two bug authentication bypass and command injection attack against the WAN interface of a TP-Link AX1800 router, a command injection attack which caused a Lexmark MC3224i printer to serenade the audience with a well-known Mario Brothers tune. We had a command injection attack against the WAN interface of the Synology RT6600AX router. A stack-based buffer overflow against an HP Canon LaserJet Pro, LaserJet Pro M479FDW printer. An improper input validation attack against the Samsung Galaxy S22. A command injection root shell attack against the LAN interface of the Synology RT6600AX router again. Another improper input validation attack against the Samsung Galaxy S22. A two-bug attack, SQL injection, and command injection against the LAN interface of the Netgear RAX30 AX2400 router. A SQL injection on a router. That's interesting. Anyway, two different stack-based buffer overflow attacks against the Microtik router and a Canon printer. Three bugs two missing auth for critical function and an auth bypass attack against the Synology Disk Station DS920 plus NAS. Two bugs, including a command injection in an attack against the HP Color LaserJet Pro M479 FDW printer. Five different bugs leveraged in an attack against the LAN interface of the Netgear RAX30, again, AX2400 router, and three different bugs against a Netgear router and an HP printer. Now you know why I'm only doing day one. And remember, these were all 100% up-to-date devices, all cut through. 
all of that on only the first day. Uh, and it kept going like that throughout the entire event. As we know, LAN side attacks on routers and NAS devices are much less concerning than attacks that can be launched against the WAN interface. But this contest revealed plenty of both of those. And the number of printer vulnerabilities that still exist, well, I suppose we shouldn't be surprised. But obtaining well-hidden persistence inside a network is an overriding goal of anyone who penetrates an enterprise's perimeter. And printer protocols by their design, loudly broadcast and advertise on networks because their goal is to be found. Unfortunately, this results in highly vulnerable printers shouting their presence and creating a perfect and often unsuspected place for malicious post-intrusion malware to set up shop and wait, thus becoming an advanced persistent threat. So anyway, I just... Sort of as a reality check, here's, here's yes, these guys are, you know, at the top of their game, right? They're, they're the, the, the world's best hackers. Yet it appears that all they have to do is look at some device, make that the target of their scrutiny, and they can find a way in. So, you know, we, we need to, I guess anyone listening to this podcast long enough will have lost any sense that <laughs> there's anything that's invulnerable to, you know, it's somebody who is serious about finding a way in it.